Hi, so today we're going to have a look at some advanced attribute editing in AutoCAD, um, except we're going to use Excel to edit these attributes rather than AutoCAD because it's going to be a big long list of attributes. So let's have a look at AutoCAD to start off with. And here's a, a typical room layout. And I'm just going to zoom in here. You'll see that we have um, a block which has an attribute, and this is our room number. So if I just go into um, our block editor, and I'll show you this particular block. So it's room number, and if I go in there, you'll see the word number here. If I just double click on that, you'll see it comes up as an attribute. So here I could edit the attribute definition. Um, so you must have an attribute in a block for this to work. So what I'm going to do first of all, just to demonstrate what we've got set up so far, is I click on one of these blocks with the attribute, and then right click and say select similar, and this you'll see has now selected all of that same block, irrespective of what the attribute is for that block. What I'm going to do now is go across to one of the express tools. This is a great feature, and this is to export the attributes and this is why it must be a block and it must have attributes because otherwise if we just choose text and export the attributes well text doesn't actually have any attributes because it's not a block so the numbers that you want to export must be a part of the block and there must be an attribute within that block so here we go export attributes and it's going to export it as a text file which is fine and um, we're just going to put it on the desktop and leave it called the same name as our AutoCAD file name so I click Save. That's now done it. It's saved it. And if I go back to my desktop, you'll see there is the file. Now, if I just open this up, it shows me a list of all of those blocks. But I've got very limited handling here within um, my notepad or my whatever text editor I've got. So what I can do is actually open that in Excel simply by going to the data ribbon and saying open from text. So I'm opening from text and it's on my desktop and it's called floor plan sample text. Now here I'm just going to click finish. It is delimited and OK again. So there it goes. It's gone in to Excel. Now the great thing about this is I can now do some manipulation in Excel just the same as I would um, with any other Excel file. So for example, I can sort them. And you'll notice that they've gone in with a handle as well as with the attribute. So the handle is a unique identifier for that particular block that's gone in. It must have this and you mustn't delete this in the text file. But what you can do is play around with different things here. So for example, we might want that to be edited as store rather than store with a dot. Um, all I need to do now is save it, but I need to save it as a text file again in the same format. So file, save as, and I'm going to put it back in the same place again, which was on the desktop. And the file type, and this is important, it's a tab delimited text file. Yeah, it's not a comma separated text file, yeah, or any of these other text files, it's the tab delimited text file. Click on there and click Save. Now, the one thing I did slightly wrong there is it's now called Book 3 Text, which is fine. But what I need to do is when I import this again, I need to make sure it's Book 3 that I'm actually importing and not the original file that I exported. So now all I do is I say Import Attributes, and in fact, let's go to wherever that store room was. See I've got store and we change that to store. So I now say import attributes and it says from what file and you notice there's the book three which is the one we saved it as. I click open and it's now changed that specific attribute because it knew what the handle for that um, that block was and it's changed it to read store. Okay, where might we actually use this in practice? Well, let's imagine that we have a set of desks in here. And that layout of rooms is being changed. And we're just going to grab all of this. 
and those rooms there are going to be turned into a couple of big meeting rooms. Okay, so I'm just stretching some stuff across there, just so we can do that. Okay, so these are going to be two big meeting rooms, but all the room numbers of those rooms in between have now disappeared and they're now irrelevant. And what we'd probably want to do is renumber all of these rooms to suit our new office layout. So again, I'm going to click in there, right click, select similar. So that's now selected all of the blocks with the attribute, which is the room number. I'm now going to export this using my express tools, export attributes. I'm going to put it on the desktop and this time I'm going to call it floor plan new. Um, I would always suggest naming it something that lets you know that you've changed it and click on save. And now back in Excel, I'm going to open up floor plan new. So I'm just going to create a new file to start with and then go into data, get data from text. And this was my floor plan new. And there it is, excluding the ones that I deleted. OK, so as far as renumbering goes, this is much easier to do in Excel than in anything else. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is sort this smallest to largest. Now, before I do that, if I just go down to a custom sort, you'll see that Excel knows that I have headers at the top. Yeah. It's already selected the range that I'm going to sort by. And because I've right clicked in the third column, that's the one it's going to sort by. But now that I've gone to custom sort, I can choose to sort by number, which is the third column. Sort by values, smallest to largest. And there we go. So numeric values are smaller than text values. And you'll notice that the store is now store, which is what we edited it to be. This is the sixth floor. Our rooms start at 6001. And what I'm going to do is click and drag that downwards using the fill handle. And it fills them all in with the same number, 6001. But if I go down to here, I can say to fill it as a series. And it now tells me that I have a total of 88 rooms. And it's now incrementally numbered them all for me. I now save this file, remembering again to save it as, and I'm going to choose the location of the desktop again. Make sure you save it as tab delimited text file. And I'm just going to call this one floor plan new. So I'm being careful to overwrite that floor plan new text file. Yes, I do want to overwrite it. Yep, I do want to carry on using that format. OK, I'll just close Excel down and not save. Don't need to save it because I've already saved it. And now, if we have a look at these numbers here, when I now say import attributes, and I go to my floor plan new and click open, it buzzes and whirs, and now it has renumbered all of the room numbers. Yep. And it will renumber them all up to whatever it was, 88. OK. Um, you can also do all sorts of funny things in Excel. Like if I go into Excel, I could put prefixes on those room numbers as well. Uh, let me just quickly demonstrate that. So I'll go back into data. get my data from a text file and my text file is on my desktop and it's called new floor plan and what I'm now going to do is take that number there and I'm simply going to put something before it um, like an F dot 
Now if I click and drag down, all of those have automatically filled in with F dot. And you see they're left aligned. That means it's automatically put them in as text. Okay. But they're incremental as well. Now if I save that as the text file again, so save as, back on the desktop, save it as text delimited, and it's floor plan new. Yes, I do want to replace it. Yes. Okay, so now we're going to import the attributes. And we now have the F prefix before all these were numbers. Okay, I hope that's been useful. I'm the Adobe Guy, and thank you for listening.